and welcome to a brand new episode of The Founder. I'm your host, Sasha Sajal, and today I have with me Rai from Cali Reusable Bags. I got it right. You did. <laughs> so, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling very good. I'm very glad that this is a, this is a good way to start a morning. Yes, it yeah. is. Yes, it is. And you have a very unique name. Let me start off over there. Thank you. It's a little confusing. <laughs> does it mean anything? It does. It means truth in French. Well, it's a derivative oh. of a, a French word which is which means truth in French. So people get kind of confused. Awesome. So but now, coincidentally, my yeah. second name is what we've named yes, the bags. Yes, that's exactly yeah. what I was getting at. The bags. Uh, tell me about uh, your company and how it all started. Okay, so uh, the company is called Carry Reusable Bags um, and what we do is we make reusable bags, a set of reusable bags that are not sold individually. It comes as a pack of 10 okay. bags uh, and we've been retailing for about a year, a little over a year now. Um, but it started off a little, well not with the nicest of stories, it okay. started off with a little bit of an epiphany after the Mithotamulla disaster. Oh. Um, because there was a lot of conversation about what are we doing as individuals uh, with our own waste, with our own, with our own garbage and what, how are we contributing to the large picture and that kind of made me think of, of how I needed to change that. So I. Um, I did like a mock bag okay. uh, and for myself so that I could purchase uh, bulk produce at home and stuff like that. So that's how it initially started off. And then that kind of grew into an idea maybe other people should have this. Okay. Um, but I shelved that idea for a while and uh, later on that kind of came back to being a more okay. viable business idea. So you would say that actually you know, the garbage situation actually inspired you to do something better for the country? I mean, ideally, yes. Uh, I wasn't looking at starting up a business for the purpose of making a profit. I wanted to do something that was more community-centric. Oh, that's amazing. So this business kind of started off not as, okay, I'm going to do this business, I'm going to make some money and it's going to be good for me. Okay. This started off as, I'm going to do this and then, you know, hopefully cover costs. <laughs> so it was a little bit of a, a kind of a different approach to it, but I really felt like this was something that we needed. I mean, if you yeah. look at reusable bags, now there are a lot more um, uh, different brands yes. that kind of uh, make different different kinds of bags but a very simple thing it's not a it's not a really fancy product yes, you know what I mean it's not true. like well, it's a very simple product uh, but the fact that it wasn't available mm -hmm. or freely available especially those in Colombo who are some of the largest contributors of waste um, so I figured that that would be a good way in. yeah it is indeed a good way and uh, at the same time um, there is a quite a lot of products and uh, your product how long has it been here in the market so it's been uh, we started in August last year oh, wow, so okay. it's uh, one year and a couple of months um, and that's how long it's been in the market. We retail at about 10 places in Colombo uh, but the way we've kind of worked around it is that it's not necessarily, so it comes as a pack so there are places, a lot of the, um, there are lots of shops in Colombo that do sell the product but we've also wanted to extend that and sell it in places that you wouldn't usually find reusable bags okay. sold at. So okay. like I said, it's not about just selling at fancy places, but about making it accessible. Okay. So we sell at a couple of markets in Colombo as well mm -hmm. at the moment, but ideally it should be something that everyone should have. And it doesn't have to go under my brand name, but <laughs> anyone's name. Uh, or it, just, it should be a freely available product is what I'm trying to say. That's quite inspiring. Now you got the idea uh, and you know, obviously getting the idea is, is an easy thing but when you come to you know actually getting the product and uh, finding the material how was that for you how did it initially begin how did you put out your first reusable bag okay so when we first or when I first decided I want to do it uh, I was also looking at kind of so my, my, my set of bags is made with amuredi okay. or like grey okay. cloth right uh, but my first prototype I made with like a mesh plastic fabric which you see a lot of other places selling it um, but I realized that that was also eventually going to contribute to, I mean, it's non-biodegradable. Eventually, when it, when it you know, hits, a, hits some kind of uh, trash site, at some point in time, it's still going to contribute to waste. Um, so I wanted to find something that was eventually biodegradable, that, you know, that would kind of <laughs> mesh in with the system. Um, so that took a little bit of time. So I'm glad that I didn't go ahead with that initial prototype yes. of just doing something for the sake of doing it yes. and shelving it for a bit. Uh, because of financial concerns but at least the fact that I took some time to figure it out gave me the opportunity to do um, this bag which I'm I'm very proud to say that we do it because it's a very simple product but mm -hmm. um, it re really if you use it properly it can really I mean uh, we've had a no polythene um, policy at home in our yeah. own home for the last year and a half and if we can manage that then with just this set of bags and I think 
that's kind of how it should be in every home in, yeah. in the island. That's amazing. And uh, you mentioned financial. Um, in terms of financial help, um, what has helped you the most? Okay, so when I initially started up, I'm, I don't work a full-time job myself, so it's okay. not like I had massive amounts of savings that I was going to put aside for this. And any kind of company, there is an investment, especially with the first batch, not just the product, but if you look at the branding and if you wanted pictures or you want to get a, you know, even a basic website done. So there's all these costs. Um, so I did approach a bank, mm -hmm. um, but I realized that it was very difficult. And I think a lot of us who are starting up, if, we, if we don't have a full-time job and That's it's true. kind of paperwork behind it, it's a little insane. Um, in the end, I asked a family member to finance me and then ended up paying that back in full. Um, but I think these are the challenges, yeah. you know, I'm a very privileged, privileged to be able to do that and, you know, to, to ask someone for money and then be able to pay yeah. them back because there's always interest if you're going with a bank and so on. So there are challenges, there are definitely challenges that do exist if you are looking at starting up a company. So who has been your biggest support system up to date? So because we're a very small, very small company in that sense, it definitely has to be the home front. Yeah. Um, I've also, I work with uh, a supplier, a factory that manufactures these. Uh, so my supplier has been amazing. So I, I must say that without him, it would be very difficult for me to manage. Uh, and of course, a system at home, because at the end of the day, when you run small businesses, they don't run out of massive offices, they run out of your home, right? Yeah. So we have one room at home, which used to be the guest room, which yeah. is now our storage room. <laughs> uh, and try to keep the, you know, the kids away with their grubby hands, not to touch our, our nice products. <laughs> um, so it's definitely the family, the, the kind of family system. And we do have friends also who are mm -hmm. equally passionate about the product. Um, who have been some of our biggest advocates and so there are yeah those three those three categories of people I can imagine it is it is definitely hard to start up a business and uh, start up something new altogether and at the same time you know um, something that keeps you going you know what would you say that something is well I mean there are lots of things I, especially with this particular business it's really been well, something that keeps me going is the fact that we've been learning on the job, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not just about selling the product. So the product is a set of bags, it, you know, so that's quite simple. But the idea um, that, so we've, we've learned a lot um, in the process about not just about bags, because if you look at even our social media, we don't talk about only bags, but we talk about living a low waste life, how we can change things at home, things that we can do, not just in terms of waste, as garbage or, or, or kind of bring your fruits and vegetables back home, but a real lifestyle change. Um, and that change has, we've had to adopt that change. So we can't talk about things um, and then be hypocritical. Yeah. For instance, I can't talk about using bags and then go you know, to a supermarket and use True. polythene. True. Or, in general, so that, that, that learning experience really does keep me going. It's, yeah. it's, it's amazing how this product um, was a product of, of a whole bunch of things, but how that product then has changed our lives as a family and you know even as a neighborhood. I think. Yeah, it's it's been one year, right? Yeah. And uh, you know, would you say like obviously one year it's a success? I mean, looking at it as well, what would be your definition of success? Okay, so my definition of success is is I mean to be in a place that. You're doing something that you're passionate about and that you're happy about. And mm -hmm. I think that that's about it in terms yeah. of success. <laughs> that's amazing. And, you know, there's so many young, um, you know, startups out there, especially here in Sri Lanka. You know, everyone who wants to do something with just a small idea, they're also looking for uh, something that they can rely on, like a little bit of advice that you can share with them. Anyone who wants to start up uh, just like you. Okay, so one of the biggest challenges I met was self-doubt. Yeah. Uh, and I think a lot of entrepreneurs in general, there might be some self-doubt at the beginning, like why should I do this, maybe someone else will do this, I'm not really sure. So the financial aspect is one, but self-doubt was real for me. Um, so I'm glad that kind of didn't stop me from doing this yeah. because this has now made me uh, someone who's really passionate about understanding the environment and understanding my impact as an individual on the environment. Yeah. Um, so yeah. That's something that I think, I mean, if you're, if you're doubting yourself, don't. I think um, a lot of people can relate to that, you know, yeah. everyone just has questions in their minds, you know, yeah. what if 
Yeah. What That's if it What if it fails? What if it fails? Like, what if like I, I invest <laughs> two hundred and two hundred fifty thousand, three hundred thousand, one million, whatever? And what if it comes crashing down? So we had this like I had this conversation with my husband as uh, as just before we started up, and I said, listen. So we're doing two hundred fifty packs to start with. We've sold over uh, over about thousand four hundred packs by now mm. in the last year. Um, but we, when we started up, or when I started up, I basically had this conversation. I said, "Listen, if this fails for the next ten years, we give everyone carry reusable packs for like <laughs> weddings, whatever, like weddings, Christmas, whatever. This is the what they're getting. Yeah, like this is the plan B. The okay. worst thing that can happen is that we'll have like, yeah, but it's sold within like less than." I think our first set within less than three months oh, we had sold brilliant. that first set. And I, then I was panicked. I was like, "Oh no, where do we find money? We have to do a new <laughs> set." And then there was a second, a second tier of panic. But uh, yeah, it's it was all really about good. the inside voices. I think yeah. like you just need to control all of them. Now, as you know, Rai, we are on the founder, and uh, of course, I gotta ask you this question: If you ever had a founder that you admired yourself? That you wanted to sit and have dinner with, who would it be, locally or internationally? It doesn't matter. Okay, so I think a lot of my a lot of my inspiration with people, and I've said this before in different forums, is a lot of people that I work with now. Okay. Uh, and people, uh, there are two people in particular who I find, two women in particular that I find to be amazing in terms of the work they do. And one is Shilpa, who's already a friend. So I, I'd like to have oh, dinner with her. Cool. And okay. she runs Boomi, which is a um, a small uh, store, okay. but they also that. deal with eco products. And there's a lot of heart in what she does, and I'm—I mean, I'm incredibly proud of her, and I'd have dinner with her any day. <laughs> and the second is uh, someone who looks at design and innovation, which okay. um, I come from a design background. Um, so my former, my former boss, uh, Linda Spilderwind, who runs uh, Colombo Innovation Tower, and she runs uh, AOD. Uh, both people are incredibly inspiring with the work they do, the kind of platforms they create for people. Uh, and there's a lot of heart in what they do, and I really appreciate that. So I'd have dinner with. I'm sure that's accessible. <laughs> I but think I'd that, have that's pretty yeah. much possible. Yeah. Right? But I, I really do admire them. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now this question is for our wonderful sponsor, our venue sponsor, Colombo Cooperative, and uh, you know they're all about creating workspaces for new startups, and you know to let people boom with the creativity as well, and make sure that they have their own space for uh, creative spaces for their own companies as well. And they would like to know what community is to you, and how would you build it? Yeah, so community is a massive part of even uh, Cali Reusable Bags as a company, as a brand. Uh, community is a massive thing. We've reached out to. It's not just about selling the product to people who are already in the kind of eco space. But building that community much larger by getting the product out there and having people understand their impact uh, on the environment. So it's about talking to people and kind of expanding that community, but also bringing that community together in order to work towards a, um, a, a, a better space or yeah. a better place for the environment. So community is definitely something I think if you're looking at businesses, you can't look at it purely from a profit angle. You have to look at it from a community angle to yeah. make it work. So uh, I think uh, in the in the in, you know environmental space, there is a big community coming together to now do something good and I think it's our responsibility to take that out to our own communities, yeah. our own neighborhoods, our own circles and to continue to take that, that message out and to create a larger discourse on it. That's a good answer. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, with that in mind, of course, um, can you tell us about your product and where we can find it? Okay, so it retails at about, like I said, about 10 places in Colombo including the Good Market, Celine, Barefoot, Ripe. Uh, ba Butter Boutique, Nougat Cafe, so we retail at quite a few places. Uh, we also do individual bags at two places, which is at Pang Pang, but we also sell it at the Vallabhatta Market. Um, so that's really been a really big part of the product because we wanted everyone to have access to the product. So the whole pack isn't sold at the smaller places, but it's about accessibility. This is a bag that everyone in the island should have. Everyone should have a reusable bag. Everyone should use it to use to take home their rice or their khadala, yeah. their paripu, <laughs> their vegetables, their fruits, uh, their eggs, whatever. It shouldn't be, you know. So we've, we're trying to get it out there, yeah. and it shouldn't be a Colombo-centric thing. I think that is a personal goal to try to get it out of Colombo, um, and also try to build other communities. Mm -hmm. um, so because you asked the community question, I'm going to go back <laughs> to it. I'm going to try to make this as short as possible, but to uh, encourage other people in different communities to make their own bags and sure. to set it within so yeah. um, my bag retails in a few places here but ideally this is a bag that everyone should be selling all over the island I think uh, Sri Lanka is doing a pretty good job at yeah. uh, you know using their reus reusable bags and they're a little bit more environmental friendly today because yeah. um, now there's the a trend, little bit more of 
yeah. an education on and it. An education yeah. on it. Yeah. yeah. But there's still some resistance. There is. There is yeah. a little bit. So, Rai, it's been an absolute joy talking to you. And uh, wow, you have done so much for yourself. And you must be proud. I am, actually. <laughs> I am. I, I think I would be lying if I said I didn't. But I am very proud of myself. Well, the founder is also made possible thanks to Akbar Premium Instant Coffee. Imported from Brazil with 100% Arabica Brazilian coffee beans. It's now available in Cargill's, Arpico and Spa. So make sure you get yourself a cup just like I do because this is what gets me up in the morning. So that's my question to you. What gets you up in the morning? To be really honest, my children. I have a one and a half year old and a three and a half year old and that's pretty much what gets me up in the morning. If you're looking for something inspiration, you wouldn't have found it. <laughs> well, your uh, kids can be an inspiration, right? Yeah, well, my, perhaps we need to have coffee over this. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining me. It's been a pleasure. And uh, yeah, I wish you all the very best of luck. Thank you so much. And uh, good luck with Kelly Reusable Bags. Thank you, and thank you for having me on The Founder. Absolutely. And there you have it uh, on yet another episode of The Founder with me, Tasha Sejal. And here we have Rye Kelly reusable bags.